Nadia Blumenthal, branch supervisor of the Putterham location of the Public Library of Brookline uh, here with you today, uh, bringing you virtual gentle chair yoga with Keith Beasley. Um, you can find this streaming live through this Zoom meeting, also through our Facebook page and uh, through our partners, uh, Brookline Interactive Group, through their Facebook page. Um, it will be archived onto YouTube and it can also be accessed on uh, RCN and Comcast uh, Channel 3. Um, welcome. Before we start our program, I just have to read a brief disclaimer. Um, participation in this online yoga program could result in injury. Not all exercises presented here are suitable for everyone. These exercises are not intended to substitute for proper medical care or advice. Always consult your physician before beginning any exercise program. The creators, teachers, and producers assume no responsibility for injuries from participation in this program. And with that, I give you Keith. Can everybody see me okay? I'll take that as a yes, since I haven't heard anything. And can you hear me okay? Am I now loud enough? I'll try to speak up so I'm a little louder. So let's start out. <clears throat> it's nice if you have a uh, blanket or something for support on your chair. Just talk for a moment about how we sit, since it's chair yoga. We, we use a chair and we need to be supported so that the back can be aligned, the spine can be aligned and we can sit up nice and tall. And so for me, because of this chair, it's nice to put a little blanket or something hanging back there to fill in a little gap. So you may need to adjust your chair a little bit. If you're a particularly tall person and uh, you'll find that your knees might be sticking up, you can take your blanket or blankets or whatever you have around the house, a cushion, and you can sit on it, and that'll help to uh, make the thighs approximately parallel with the floor. And that's what we're looking for. We want things to be, uh, if, it was, if it was raining out, imagine the rain would come onto your thighs and it would gently roll down the thighs towards the knees. It's hard to extend the spine if the knees are sticking up like this. It's really hard to sit up straight. And the other choice is the opposite is if you're short. I, I'm a little bit shorter, but these chairs work okay for me. You can put something under the feet. And so rather than the knees being down like this, if you're shorter, and notice that the thigh isn't very parallel, that'll help make them parallel. So anything we can do to support ourselves, it's really important since we'll be sitting for, I won't sit the whole time, but we'll be sitting for a good chunk of the hour that we're practicing. So we want to be comfortable. And you could even transfer these ideas to your regular, uh, the way that you sit. I know that a lot of cars, the seat is designed so that it goes back, so that your butt, if this was the seat you're looking sideways, your butt would be back here, your legs would be hanging over the edge here. To get headroom, they drop the back of the seat. It's really hard on the back. It's really hard on the back. But having said that, let's go ahead and sit up nice and tall. So find that nice posture, nice posture. And for most of us, that'll mean sliding all the way back from the chair and really getting the buttocks near the back of the chair and also some width with the knees here. This allows the pelvis to tip forward. And when the pelvis tips forward, we get a little more of that natural curve. So I'll turn sideways so you can see. So this is the pelvis tipping forward, and this is my pelvis tipping back. Notice the curve is, is uh, the opposite. So this is hard on the spine when we do this, when we're kind of slumped. So we want to be able to tip forward a little bit, not too much. We don't want a sway back. Some people might have a... Uh, a big curve here, we don't want that. So we want something in the middle. And we wanna have those three curves in the back. We have the, it goes in in the lower back, it comes out around the shoulder blades and it goes in around the neck. 
Those are our three natural curves. And let's do a few breaths together. So we call this yogic breathing or complete breathing or diaphragmatic breathing, if you're familiar with that. So we're feeling the belly moving with the breath. It can be nice to close the eyes here. It can be nice to close the eyes. And if you find it hard to sit up, or if you feel like the back needs a little more support, try adjusting the knees a little bit. You could try bringing them in a little bit, or you could try bringing them out a little bit and see if that helps. It might not, but it might. So, so much of what we do in our yoga practice is a, kind of an experiment. We have general guidelines that we follow and they work for many people or most people, but they don't work for everyone. You're also welcome to rest your hand on your belly and feeling the belly going back and forth with the breath. You might even notice as you exhale, at the very end of it, a little contraction in the abdomen here at the very end. I'm not really trying, but it's sort of a natural, as we release the breath out, the belly just seems to want to contract at the very end. And then we soften the belly when we breathe in. So it's important to relax the belly. And then as we exhale, the belly goes back in. We'll do this a few more times. And as we're sitting, see if you can feel the bottoms of the feet. Actually, let's move the feet. Slide the feet back and forth a little bit so that you can feel the bottoms of the feet or feel the, uh, feel the feet in contact with the floor, whether or not you have shoes or you have socks or bare feet just a little bit of movement, and then bring balance to the left and the right side. And then with that idea of balance, move up the legs and feel that the knees are balanced, because in a sense, the knees are hanging off the, the hips. And also the buttocks are balanced. So the buttocks, are, are the, uh, the buttocks and the feet are our support in the chair underneath us. So they keep us, uh, they, they're the opposite, they're, uh, facing gravity. So gravity is pulling us down. So you want to be balanced. And then coming up the body, feeling the ribs. So we were feeling the belly before. You can even just tap your ribs a little bit. Feel that the ribs are in balance. So I'm not leaning to one side or the other. We want to be nice and balanced along the uh, spinal cord right in the middle. So the spinal cord is rising up in the middle. And then the rest of us is kind of relaxed and hanging down. The shoulders are hanging down. And then release the arms down. Let the arms hang down by the side. And then wiggle the fingers a little bit. And then feel the evenness, the balance on the right and left hands and fingers. So they're hanging down evenly. You could even imagine... Uh, not sure anybody uses these anymore, but they used to have the, uh, if you used to go to a market and they would have a, uh, 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 the way they weigh your stuff would be they put it on a scale and on one side of the scale, they put a weight and on the other side, they would have the product or whatever it was you were buying. And when they came into balance, that was, they were equal. So we want to be equal on our sides or nearly equal. I mean, we're not perfect, so. Let's add some movement to this. So we're gonna bring the palms together. And go ahead and spread, I'm gonna turn my hands so you can see. Go ahead and turn the, turn, uh, spread the fingers apart like this. And make sure the ends of the fingers line up with each other. So you really have to look at them and make sure that one isn't sticking out. It lines up as precisely as you can make it. And see if you can bring some evenness to this. So as the palms are pressing into each other, as the fingers press into each other, I feel an evenness. And if I close my eyes and only feel my hands, see if the two hands can begin to feel like one hand. 
So you can't really feel where one hand ends and the other one starts. And then we're gonna inhale and lift the hands up and then turn the palms out, exhale and come down. So we'll do this a few times. I like to start with this beginning every morning really with some sort of lengthening of the spine. And we facilitate that lengthening by this movement of the arms, this lifting up and then coming back down. So it's a great way, even when you get out of bed, maybe you take your shower and you get a little warmed up, maybe you have some uh, warm tea or water. And then it's nice to be able to extend the spine. So we start to, it's almost like if you, if you wake up and you, uh, sometimes people get out of bed and they go, ah, and they stretch like that. It's a natural, it's this natural thing that we do as human beings. Or if you have a dog or a cat, they're really good examples of that. Let's bring the hands back together. Just pause there for a minute. Bring that balance back to the hands. Bring your attention right to the palms and the, the fingers where they touch. And we're going to go the other way. So for this one, we exhale. The hands drop down. We turn the palms up. And then we inhale and come on up. So we're going to go around in a circle the opposite way now. And you may notice the chin lifts up and down a little bit. I'm not really trying to move the chin, though. It's just sort of moving on its own. That's what happens with our spines. When we move one part of the spine, as the arms come up, we get a lifting and an opening in the heart. So we get this, keep moving the arms. We get this opening across the chest. And that's a really good thing because we often sit in a position where we do not open the chest. And over time, over the hours, we often spend seated either at a computer or uh, watching television or just sometimes maybe reading a book. We often, the chest tends to collapse. So let's bring the hands down. We tend to do this. So let's try this little, Something, if you can remember it, something to do throughout the day is moving the shoulders forward and back. So try starting with the hands resting on the knees and then lifting the heart forward and then back. Or thinking about moving the shoulders forward and back. I'll turn sideways so you can see. So this is forward. And then the shoulders move back. So my shoulder blades are actually, they're, they're broadening here and then they're coming closer together. And this is really good for not only opening the chest, but also bringing some mobility to the thoracic spine between the shoulder blades. And I'm doing this with maybe 50% effort. I'm not overdoing it. I'm not. I'm not pushing my shoulders back so much that I'm straining. I'm trying to get some movement with some ease at the same time. And then let's do the shoulders up and down. So I'm going to lift up and then down. And I think 50% on this one too. So 50% effort up and then guiding the shoulders down, 50% effort down. Think about the elbows being heavy here. So it's almost like you have weights on the elbows and they're pulling the shoulders down, but without straining. And I'm gonna go back and forth. And let's try it with the breath too. Let's, uh, let's inhale as the elbows go down and we'll exhale the uh, shoulders up, inhale, elbows down, exhale, shoulders up, inhale, elbows down, and exhale, shoulders up. And now another chest opener, so this is another good one. We're inhaling and exhaling. 
So notice I'm starting with my hands, just like before with the palms together like this, and my fingers are spread wide. I'm not forcing anything. So if, if think about 50% uh, effort here too. So my hands, there's a little bit of effort to hold them open, but I'm not straining. I'm not, they're not stiff. I'm not, my jaw isn't tightening. My face isn't all <clears throat> tense. One of the things that we often do in our yoga class is we try to do something and we, we struggle with it. So we use extra effort and we might get a little more of what we're looking for, but we also get tension where we don't want it. So we're trying to get some, we're trying to get movement, but without creating tension. So when I bring my shoulder blades together and I open my heart, I keep the neck relaxed or as relaxed as I can and the jaw and the tongue and the throat. So these muscles are all really close together. Oftentimes we end up working a whole bunch of muscles that don't really have anything to do with the movement. And then this time let's give ourselves a little wrap like this, a little hug. And then we'll inhale again. So go back and forth like that. A few more times. You can think about maybe a little, uh, little fluidity. Don't worry about how much effort. Don't over effort. Think about how fluid you can be and give yourself a hug. And again, I'm not trying. I'm not giving myself a big hug. I'm just so gently wrapping my arms. And then we're going to bring the hands down. Now let's go ahead and lean from side to side. So this was a, that was a little warm up more for the uh, the shoulders and also starts to warm up the neck a little bit, but we'll get to that in a minute. We're gonna uh, do a little bit more with the core of the body here. So the core of the body is really important because it supports the spine. It supports the spine. It also makes it, uh, it influences our ability to balance and really all the muscles in the body rely on the core to be strong. So notice I'm leaning and lifting my foot up. Now, if your chair is hard like this, I mean, this is a wooden chair, the, the seat, you might want to put a cushion. My, I mean, I feel okay down here, but if I'm on the floor, say, and I'm on my hands and knees, I need a cushion under my knees. So we need to just think about what, uh, what do we need today for our own body, because we're all a little different. So if you need a little cushion under there, try a little something, even a towel. I actually have a towel here. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. The other thing is hydration is starting to get warmer. So make sure that you have a little bit of water. I don't like to over um, water tends to be cooling for the body. That's a teaching from BKS Iyengar, who's a very famous yogi. Um, and uh, so we try to avoid drinking a lot of water during our practice because as we're practicing, we want to actually be a little bit warmer and the water's going to cool us down unless we're really hot. Like in the summertime, if you're doing something that's very hot out and you're very uncomfortable, try drinking some water. Probably room temperature water is the best thing. Uh, but before the class, or even just to keep the, uh, <clears throat> keep the throat from getting too dry as we breathe, sometimes since we breathe deeper, or we're doing a little bit more effort, we'll uh, breathe a little bit heavier through the, uh, through the mouth, and that tends to be drying. And we'll come back. <coughs> I'm gonna roll the shoulders a couple of times. And we're gonna reach the hand up like this. So I'm at about a 45 degree angle out. I'm not right out to the side like this. Think of, so this is straight ahead. This is uh, 90 degrees. I'm gonna be somewhere around 45 degrees. And I'm gonna reach up and then I'm gonna bring my hand 
uh, somewhere in this vicinity. So for some people, it's okay to just rest on the top of the head. And some people may go, say, to the shoulder. If the shoulder isn't able to reach up, so we don't remember, we don't want to force anything. It's okay to do this. It's okay even to bring the elbow a little bit in more. So some people might find that more comfortable, or some people might find the elbow out a little more to be more comfortable. But but somewhere in the neighborhood of 45 degrees, or you start with that anyway. And for some people, you may be able to reach all the way back so that the hand is uh, touches the shoulder blade. And we'll do it one more time. And we'll do the opposite side now. So your choice, and it may be different depending on uh, the mobility in your shoulder. And many people have different mobility in the shoulders. And actually, let's do it this way. Let's add the breath to it. So we'll start out with the arm down, and then we'll inhale. And then as we exhale, we'll fold and bend at the elbow. And then we'll inhale back up and exhale down. So it's inhaling up, exhaling, inhaling up, exhaling down. So notice we've got that inhaling is on the way up and exhaling is on the way down. And then let's roll the shoulders. <clears throat> We're gonna bring the hands up like this, but a little turning to get the belly moving. So as you turn like this, think about feeling the belly down here. So if you notice when my elbows move, you can see the uh, belly turning. So I'm thinking more about moving the belly rather than the shoulders way back. So this is the shoulders going way back and the belly's moving, but I'm trying to think more belly. So if you bring your attention down to the navel, down to the belly button, see if you can feel the skin moving back and forth. You could even, if you wanted, you could even do one, one arm like this, rest one hand on the belly. And then you'll notice that as I turn, my hand is actually moving across. It moves from one side to the other. And in the beginning, it might not move very much. It might only move a little bit, but with practice over time, so that means over weeks or months, it won't, it won't happen today. Uh, you'll get more movement of the hand and therefore more movement of the skin on the belly. And this is good for digestion and elimination. And we'll bring the hands down. Oh, see, the other thing is you can do this standing as well. So if you're tired of sitting, we've been sitting for, uh, I think about 20 minutes or so, feel free. And remember, this is your class. I can't see anybody. So, um, you have to, you'll have to judge for yourself whether or not standing is a good idea for you. But, but if you want to stand, if you're comfortable standing, there's no balance issues, you can stand and do the same movement like this. And notice the turning belly is the same here. Turning belly is the same. Let's go ahead and drop the hands down now. So whether you're standing or sitting, And then go ahead and bring the elbows back up and a little higher. If you get to the uh, point where it bothers your shoulders, please don't go any higher. Actually go down a little bit. So that the rule of thumb in yoga is always when you get to the point where, and I'm going to sit down, but you can stay standing if you want. When you get to the point where you're, um, you're starting to get real discomfort or pain, you've gone too far. And then we'll come back and we'll roll the shoulders and let's do the neck. So we're gonna sit up nice and tall and lift the chin up and then let the chin come down. So I'm very mindful when I lift my chin up not to let my head go too far back. So 
The reason for that is that notice the curve in the head here. When I drop my head way back, the vertebrae here get kind of compressed. And I don't really want that. It's not really, it's not great for your neck. So I come up only a little bit. Or I should say I drop the head back only a little bit. But I let the chin come down as much as it wants. So I'm just relaxing the chin down. There's no pressure here at all. And then I'm lifting up. So you might be looking up a little bit at the ceiling. And then looking down at the floor. You can even, so for some people this might, um, depending on how your balance is, you might try closing the eyes here if this throws off your, uh, your balance or makes you a little dizzy and see if that helps or slow down, go a little slower, go a lot slower. And then we're gonna turn from side to side. I should just do this first, somebody, um, I actually just learned this. This is a, uh, this helps with a fascial release that makes it a little bit more uh, uh, easier to turn the head from side to side. So let's start just sweeping the head from side to side, sweeping the, uh, say the chin from side to side, not turning as far as you can go. See about how easily the head turns. So this isn't about uh, trying to look over the shoulder. It's really about how easily does my head turn. And then uh, go ahead and take your fingers and we're gonna massage the ears here. So when I say massage the ears, I'm gonna give them a, a gent, I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna very gently kind of squeeze and almost like, almost like this. Um, and I'm gonna work my way down the ears. So notice my fingers are going down slowly. This does not, it is not hurting. Please don't hurt your ears. This should not hurt. If it hurts, you're doing it too hard. And then I'm gonna start and go back up. I'm gonna go down one more time. This is also good in the winter time, if your ears get cold, this can help with circulation in the ears. It's not such a big issue these days because it's getting warmer. And then go ahead and bring the hands down and then Go ahead and turn the head again. Let's see if it's any easier to turn the head. Remember, I'm still thinking ease of movement, ease of movement here. And I find this makes it feel a little bit more like my, my neck is better lubricated. So it's easier to turn my head. So somebody had told me that, uh, actually a teacher told me that the, uh, Rubbing the ears like this adjusts, uh, connects with the fascia. So the fascia are the, uh, the sheath-like structures over the muscles. And they can create a lot of limitations for our muscles. And that this helps to release some of the fascia, fascia tissue. And uh, let's see, um, oh, uh, ear to shoulder. We're still doing the neck here. Ear to shoulder. I try to keep the shoulders relatively stable here. So I'm not leaning way over. And a little bit's okay. And if you want to make a pillow, you can back and forth like this. So this, the use of the hands can make a nice positioning for the head. So I just rest my ear right on my hands and my hands are resting on the shoulder. And then I go to the other side. You can also add the breath to it. You can inhale up and then exhale as the head comes over. So one of our, one of our yoga principles in our, in our asana practice is that our exhalation is an opportunity or it, it uh, enhances relaxation. So when my ear is coming down, that's when I want this 
upper part of the neck to be able to relax. So when I exhale, it helps to relax. And then when I'm efforting, when I'm coming back up and I'm using the muscles here, I'm inhaling and it's kind of lifting me up a little bit. And then I'm gonna come back down. And then finally, we're gonna make some circles. We're gonna circle around. Again, being careful not to drop the head backwards. And also, if you find that you get any dizziness or real discomfort, go a little slower. Make the circles smaller. We're not racing. A nice, steady. Think about the uh, tortoise in the hair. Be the tortoise. Be the tortoise. Oh, we're going to go the other way. Please go the other way. And we'll sit up nice and tall, take a few breaths. So we call this cactus breath because we look kind of like a cactus like this. We'll inhale and sweep the arms and then back. And if you'd like to give yourself a hug, feel free. Feel free. You can always, you can always use a hug these days. Everybody can use a hug. Since it seems like we're not really allowed to do a lot of hugging, swinging the arms, and see if you can find an ease of movement here. Nice and easy, graceful. Think graceful. Think graceful with the movement. And then one more time. And then roll shoulders. And let's all go down to our feet. We're going to rock the feet. Actually, let's do this first. Let's, uh, let's scoot back in the chair. So go ahead and uh, slide all the way back in the chair so you have support. You feel supported. It's relatively easy to sit up because we're going to lift both legs here. And what's happening is when we, lift, when we lift our feet off the floor, now all the weight is being supported by this part of the body. And it makes it harder we don't have anything to press down to help lift the spine up. So our spinal extension in part is related to our ability to anchor ourselves in the earth. So when we remove our feet, we start to lose some of that or it's harder to sit up. And let's point and flex like this. I'm gonna go back and forth. Now, if, if this is uncomfortable for your back, if you find that your back gives you trouble, you then work with one leg, one foot down and one foot up. So now we've given a little more support back to the spine. And then if you're switching feet, you can go ahead. If you're using one leg at a time, go ahead and switch. But if you're doing both, continue. And then we're going to uh, place the feet down, rock the feet. So for this one, the ankles are approximately underneath the knees. So it's about a 90 degree angle here. So I'm rocking like this. And notice that if I sometimes forget, I'll start to slump a little. So I still want to have that good posture. The chest is lifted, the shoulder blades come in slightly, and also there's support from the belly here. So in order to stabilize the, the this pelvis and the lumbar region, we not only use the back, but we need a little bit of a little bit of effort from the belly. So think about moving the. Uh, you can even take your finger, and just press on your belly button. So we want this area to be firm, not hard, not like uh, it's not six pack abs. It's firmness, and that helps to support the spine. And that way we have both the back and the belly. And it provides some uh, stabilization for the hips and the buttocks. So we're rocking back and forth. And let's add the hands to that like this. Have the hands sweeping the fingers forward and back. And when the fingers come back, when the fingers come back, we're gonna let the hands close like this and then open. Kind of like a flower, think about a flower. Hands are like a flower, closing morning glory, closing and opening. 
and the feet are like a rocking chair, rocking back and forth. And I even get a little bit, I feel my chin moving a little bit. As my fingers go out, my chin wants to lift up a little. So I'm going to let it. So I'm getting a little bit of sort of a ripple effect of this, the moving my arms and moving a little bit. And I like it. I like all these movements together because um, I can do the hands and wrists and feet in about half the time. If I did everything on its own, it would take twice as long. And let's do the wrists around like this. And if you want, if you're comfortable with scooting back again, you're welcome to lift the ankles up and do them at the same time. And then we'll change directions. And think about going a little slower. And make sure the uh, make sure the hands and feet are in sync. Or I should say, of course, it's up to you since it's your practice, but try to get that get them in sync. So that means that when I'm looking at my fingers and toes, right now they're pointed straight ahead. You can keep your circling. I'm going to circle them at the same, uh, they'll be circling at the same location on the, if you were looking at a clock face, they would be at the same spot. So when my fingers go out to the side, my toes are going out. And when they come back, they're coming back in. And of course the ankles and wrists, we get much more, uh, most people are much more mobile in the wrists. So you're not going to get as much, as big a circles, but you can time them so that they stay together. It becomes a little like a mini meditation. And then we'll go ahead and rest. And let's go ahead and open and close the hands a few times. Opening and closing. Without straining, though, I am opening fully, but with 50% effort. And then coming back closing with 50% effort. So I'm not, uh, I'm not, it's not like I'm really mad at somebody and I'm ready to punch them. I'm closing with a little bit of, a little bit of effort. And then go ahead and extend the arms and then touch the shoulders. <clears throat> let's, let's try this. I haven't done this before, but let's, <clears throat> let's try this. Let's try, uh, you get a choice here. You can do both legs and hands like this, or you can do one like this. It's a little bit like if you've done bicep curls. Imagine that there's a connection between the hand and the foot so that when I bring the hand up, it pulls the foot up. So you can do both on the same side. You can do a double like this. You could even, if you wanted, do the opposite, like this. And one of the best ways to, one of the best ways to tune in with this is to actually feel the connection. Feel, imagine, use your imagination to feel a string between them. If you try to intellectualize it, if you try to, um, Use the part of the brain that is saying, I'm going to lift them at the same time, it's harder. But if you use the, uh, the imagination, which is the a different, I uh, forget which side, I think the imagination is the right, more, we're more creative on the right side of the brain. Uh, so we end up using the more creative side of the brain, and I find that easier. I'm not, I can't speak for everyone. And then go ahead and finish up a couple more and then come back down. I can't speak for everyone, but, but I find that to be easier. I can connect it. I don't have to actually think about it. I just think about the connection and the string. And the brain does the rest of the work. It's a lot easier. And uh, let's see what we're doing. Ah, so let's do some, uh, some leg lifting. So we're going to lift up and then come back down, kind of slowly with the breath. I'm going to change feet each time. 
And go ahead and check your posture too. So if you can remember to check your posture periodically, that's good. I might not remember to remind you, but if you can remember to check your posture, that's good. I'm going to go up, inhale up, exhale down. And notice how the uh, I'm flexing the foot. So if I'm sideways like this, my leg is relatively straight, and I'm pulling my toes back towards the knee. And then I come back down. Toes back towards the knee. So it's imagine the heel pressing away. Imagine the heel extending away from the hip when you do this. So there's lengthening. So the, the really nice thing about this movement is the lengthening it does on the hamstrings back here and the calf muscle. And those are two areas where, because we sit so much, many people, they're very, very tight, including me. So this is a nice way to stretch them out. You could even, if you're, if you're stuck at a table for a while, just do a few of these, sitting up nice and tall. If you're at your computer, you're working away, Try doing a little bit of uh, some leg lifting. You'll notice if you put your hands down on the thighs, that when you lift the legs up, this the quadricep contracts. And we have a, uh, we have a reaction that we have in the body. When we have two muscles that are uh, opposite or antagonistic, like the quadricep and the hamstrings, when one is active, the other one releases. So when we activate the quadricep by lifting the foot up, it actually releases the um, hamstring. So it stretches better. I think that's, uh, I'm trying to remember what that's called, something inhibition. Uh, And, oh, so the other one is, you also welcome, if this is too easy, you're welcome to bring the feet at the same time. You can even work with bringing the feet together and gently pressing the feet and get a little support that way. I'm still pressing the heels away. And then if that's still too easy, you can slide away from the back of the chair. It's, it's hard. If you slide further away from the back of the chair, it's definitely harder to be able to sit up and lift your legs at the same time. Remember, we don't want to create back pain. If you're getting any back pain or discomfort when you do this, you need the support of the back of the chair. Slide all the way back and use the chair. Or if you're still getting discomfort, just do one leg. And we'll come back down. And I'd like to do a seated triangle pose cover pretty much all the part general parts of the body uh, so see the triangle pose I'm going to slide forward in the chair a little bit so I'm near the edge of the chair and I'm going to walk my feet wide apart so normally and if you know triangle pose and you'd like to do it standing up you're welcome to do that uh, I won't be able the instructions won't match but if you're familiar with it then uh, feel free but it's triangle pose, normally we have the legs apart like this. And this one's seated, we're gonna bend the knees a little bit so that we can press the feet down. So we feel supported here. And then I'm gonna sit up nice and tall, and then I'm gonna mirror you. So we're gonna go over to the right first. I'm gonna extend my, uh, my right arm out, turn the palm up, and I'm gonna bring it alongside the ear like this. If that's, uh, if that's, bothers your shoulder, try bending the elbow like this and perhaps bringing the hand either on the head or the shoulder or somewhere lower. So it does take more, it, 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 the shoulder tends to bunch up as we raise the arm. So we're gonna come up like this and then with my other hand, I'm gonna to start to slide it down the leg. I'm gonna to bend towards this knee that my hand is sliding over. So notice there's a lengthening along here and my ribs are getting closer to my thigh as I'm coming down. And then I'm gonna come back up and lower the arm down. 
Let's do the other side. So I'm gonna extend my left arm out and then I'm gonna either bring it alongside the ear or somewhere comfortable so that it's elevated up somewhere. And then I'm gonna slide the right hand over the knee and lean over towards the right side. And the, the uh, right ribs get closer to the thigh and the lengthening of the upper part of the ribs. I'm gonna come back up. We'll do that one more time on each side. But first sit up nice and tall, take a couple of breaths. It's very important to keep breathing when we do these exercises. So we're gonna inhale and we'll bring the, uh, the right arm up. You can bring it alongside the ear. The other hand is on the opposite knee. And then we're gonna slide the hand over the knee. We're gonna to begin to bend over to the side. And then we'll come back up. Remember to keep breathing. So even when we get in this extended position in triangle, we wanna just keep our natural breath. If you find that you can't do that, you're probably going too deeply into the pose. So don't go so far and see if you can breathe, still breathe. And other arm up, and then we're gonna start to slide the hand down and gently go over to the other side and then come back up and take a couple of breaths. So that's triangle pose. That's a nice pose, especially for opening the sides of the body. So we're going to do, a, uh, we're going to either do a standing mountain pose or seated mountain pose. So if you, if you want to do standing mountain pose, please go ahead and stand up and find your mountain pose, which means the feet are underneath the hips. Although some people like the feet together, you, you certainly can do it that way. I prefer it with the feet a little bit apart. And then I'm gonna stand up nice and tall and I'm gonna extend the arms down. Just see, raise this up just a little bit so you can see me a little better. And I have my chair too. So remember the chair here is handy for balance. And I'm gonna stand up nice and tall or if I'm seated, if I'm seated, it's the same thing except my hip and knees are bent. I'm going to extend my spine up and I'm going to lift my ribs up. I'm going to open my chest by moving my shoulders back. And let's try, let's try bringing the hands either somewhere behind us. So you could start with this, with the hands. I'll turn so you can see a little. Hands on the buttocks. You could work with the, the uh, taking hold of the elbows. You could also work with the interlacing the fingers like this. So if you are in the chair, it definitely helps to slide a little forward so you can re have room to get your arms behind you. But if you're standing, just need to find a spot where, it's com where this is comfortable and you're able to soften the shoulders so the shoulders are, are hanging down. Turn sideways so you can see. I like this position a lot because when I interlace my fingers, I, I don't have to really um, use a lot of effort to keep the arms back there. The interlace kind of holds the hands, which in turn holds the uh, arms back there. This takes a little bit more work. Uh, also holding the elbows like this helps to keep things open. And notice it cha does change a little bit. If your belly starts to stick out too much, you may need to activate the abdomen a little bit and just bring it in slightly, slightly. So we wanna support the back and then we're gonna come back. And then we're gonna do, um, um, do a little lifting. So if you're standing, please come behind your chair and then go ahead and find your, uh, Find your top of your chair with your fingertips. And if you're seated, you're gonna to slide to the edge of the chair so that you're able to actually put, you're gonna be extending the leg back like this. So we're gonna walk the foot back like this. Same thing standing. So notice that the movement is in the hip joint like this. 
I'm going to stand and extend. And if you don't need the chair, you're welcome to bring the hands behind you, or you can even support the back. So we're stepping back like this as a way to open the uh, front, the uh, really the groin, the psoas muscle here. We have the psoas muscle that stretches up, it goes deeply, it attaches to the lower back. And at the same time, if you, if you uh, tap on your buttocks, you'll notice when you step back that the, the gluteal muscles contract. We're gonna switch sides. So now try the other side. So if you're seated, if you're standing, continue to stay standing and step back. And notice, see if you can feel, see if you can feel the extension of the heel down. So notice the legs are relatively straight but there's this curve up the body. So if you're seated, it's the same thing. We, it can be, sometimes it can be challenging to find a spot on the chair. You can also, if uh, you reach across to the other side of the chair, it can, you can help hold yourself on the chair when you reach your leg back. So I'm coming forward and then back. So notice I'm still opening here. The thigh is starting to point down. And there shouldn't be any knee pain. If there's any knee pain here, to please don't go back so far. Make it a smaller movement. Make it a smaller movement. And then we'll stand up behind our chair. And we're gonna do a balancing pose. So we're gonna do a crane pose today. <clears throat> and you can do this in your chair or standing. So if you're standing, we're gonna Inhale and extend the spine up. So think nice and tall, and then go ahead and bring the knee up. Doesn't matter which one. Bring the knee up. And if you want more of a challenge, you can also reach down and interlace the fingers underneath the thigh like this. You could also, and you can do the same thing seated and then come back down. So you can also, for this, we'll do the other side down. Uh, sometimes it's hard to reach the arms underneath. You can also use a belt. Or a, a, in this, I mean, I have a yoga belt. You can use any kind of belt you want. You could use a tie, if you have a tie. You could even use, if you have a nice big, um, really anything that is looks kind of like this, even a piece of cloth, you could cut it you have some spare cloth or even a towel and you could use it like this. So notice I don't, I can work with my leg anywhere along here with my support. I don't have to reach down underneath. And then go ahead and come back down and we'll do, the, do this again on the other side. So we'll be, do each of these twice. And remember you can come down whenever you want. So standing up nice and tall and then shifting the weight into one leg and then lifting the knee up. Notice the knee comes straight up. And I want to get my balance. If you need to, feel free to come up just on the toes first and then lift up. And if you're new to this pose and you're uncertain about your balance, please use a chair. Please use a chair like this. And then work with just the toes and then lifting a little bit. And as you, if you practice regularly, it gets easier. And by regularly, um, you know, it's great, to, it's great to come to yoga once a week. As we get older, it's really more important to do it uh, more frequently. It helps a lot to do it more frequently. And you don't even have to do it for very long. You could even work if you have your, uh, if you're at your kitchen counter sometime, just try lifting up. Actually, let's try that. Let's everybody come back down. Let's just do the other side first. Sorry, we didn't do the other leg. So let's lift up on the other side. And wherever you're at, whether or not you're just on your toes like this, or you lift it a little bit, or you lift it a lot, or you're holding underneath the knee like this, just pause there for a minute, make sure you can breathe. You can even roll the ankle too if you want while you're here. And then come back down. And let's do this uh, 
This is a mindful marching. Notice that the knees are coming straight up. So if I put my hands out like this, I want to make sure the knees aren't going out to the side. There's a tendency for us to do that. And that might mean that you need to uh, squeeze a little bit or <clears throat> use the inner thighs to keep the knees on track. And this can take a little practice. You have to practice the idea of teaching your body to keep the knees on track. And let's come back down. Let's sit back down, please. <clears throat> and we're going to slide, let's slide forward in the chair and let's make some circles with the shoulders around. This is a really good exercise for the core of the body. Because as we come forward, <clears throat> we're really using the back. And as we go to the side, we have the uh, lateral part of the body muscles. And as we lean back, I'm going slowly so that you can see all the muscles here are contracting, the muscles all the way down, all the way up here on the front of the body. And so as I circle around, I'm getting a lot of different parts of the body working. This, but this whole core area down here, and I'm gonna circle the other way. So if you want more of a challenge, try taking the hands and circling the hands around. And if this is too challenging, if, it, if you need less of a challenge, if you have any discomfort or pain in the lower back or the sides, try not making the circle so bigger. Focus a little more about feeling the movement of the weight. So as I circle around, the weight's actually moving. You, you'll be able to feel it move from one foot to the other and from one sitting bone to the other and one buttock to the other. So as I lean to one side, everything shifts over to this side. I feel more. If you give yourself a chance to feel, you'll feel it. Sometimes that takes practice. Sometimes going a little slower and really focusing on feeling, you know, don't make the movements quite so big. And feeling, spending a little more time feeling rather than just trying to move. And you'll be able to feel a little better. And then we'll go side to side. And then we're gonna sit up nice and tall. I'm gonna scoot back. We're gonna come into our Shavasana, our, uh, our, um, final relaxation. And for me, this is nice with a little cushion behind. You're also welcome to use some sort of blanket or a towel to keep warm. This can be nice too if you have any kind of, it doesn't even matter, you could even use a towel. If you have a big bath towel, take a bath towel and just cover yourself a shawl, a sweater, really anything. Anything that you want can be used for uh, just to keep us a little, just a touch warmer. And scooting all the way back in the chair. So then I feel like the back of the chair is supporting me. And then finding a spot to rest my hands. So for this, I, uh, I like my feet a little wider than hip width. So it's gonna depend on how your pelvis is relative to the rest of your spine. Some people might like a big wide, wide knees, pelvis tips more easily forward. That may be more comfortable, it might not be. So find that spot in between, between being way out and being together. Most people won't find being together comfortable. So try moving the feet out and then find what works for you. And then resting the hands either on the knees or in the lap, whatever works for you. And we're gonna come back to our breath. We're gonna come back to the breath. And each time I breathe in, I allow myself to sit up a little bit taller, just a little, not over-efforting though. 
really more thinking about an alternative to slumping. So rather than letting everything go, we just keep a little bit of effort, a little bit of thought towards our posture. And then when we exhale, we soften the shoulders and the arms and the hands. So our inhalation is an opportunity to feel supported by the breath, supported by the earth, under our feet, under our buttocks. And then the exhalation is an opportunity to soften the body, but not to give up our nice posture. We can let go a little bit of the effort, but don't collapse. Don't collapse, very important. And as you feel this, this rhythmical breath, this rhythmical experience in the body, you can even allow yourself, if you want, to give a little smile, or at least soften the face and the jaw and the throat. Release the eyes. Soften the skin around the temples. Releasing the shoulders, relaxing the heart and the belly, relaxing the back of the body, the upper back, the middle back, the lower back, and softening the buttocks and the hips, relaxing the thighs and the knees, softening the shins, the calves, and the feet. Balanced in the chair, feeling balanced on the feet, balanced on the buttocks. Balanced on the cheeks, the sides of the face, the face and the eyes. We'll continue for a minute or so with a silent meditation focused on the breath. Each time we breathe in, feeling a lightness, a gentle lift from the breath, from the earth. And then each time we exhale, feeling a softness, a release, a letting go. And support by the earth. We'll begin that now. Namaste. So thank you all for practicing today. Thank you. Thank you to the friends of the library, the library and big as well. Thank you very much. So if anybody has questions, um, 